Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So this is going to be a response video to the Immortals video entitled Gripes with Preppers. A lot of the points he makes are very compelling and a lot of them I disagree with. So we're going to have some good old fashioned retorts in this video. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this one. We're pretty much going to touch on every critical aspect of prepping. So let's get into it. All right, so before I do this, I would encourage you to go and subscribe to The Immortal. Personally, I like his channel because he does critically scrutinize uh, the preposphere in a lot of ways, and he does so sometimes, uh, I guess the best word to describe it would be sardonically, perhaps a little sarcastically, but uh, it's all in good fun, and, and there's a lot of things that he says I can relate to. I'm going to point out some points of agreement and some points that I disagree with him about. So let's get to his first point. He had 20 of these gripes with preppers, as he calls them. I should say that a lot of these topics I've addressed in lots of my older videos. Like if you go back to some of the first videos I made, most of them have under a thousand views. And uh, the first one is an interesting one, and it's it's all about the keeping up with the Joneses thing. He talks about, you know, the idea that a lot of preppers are in this mentality that we're different than other consumers because we're buying guns, ammo, and food and stuff that's functional, whereas you're buying TVs. Regardless, we're still always trying to one-up each other with regards to the best food, best guns, the best survival gear. That the old school survivalism was not really like that. It was more of a MacGyver type homesteading thing, I guess you could say, using what you had at your disposal and not trying to constantly uh, one up and, and be technologically superior to your neighbor. Now, I think the point that has merit in what he's saying is the general idea of keeping up with the Joneses. I don't think that, you know, preppers can claim any sort of moral superiority for doing what they're doing over, you know, a person who is necessarily, you know, looking at marble countertops and stuff like that. However, you know, it could be argued that what they're doing is more functional in the end. And if it's bringing them the same amount of peace of mind, sense of security and all the rest and joy, pleasure, happiness, it's probably more beneficial to have that stuff because if they're getting the same amount of peace of mind as the person with the 40, 50 inch screen, plasma, 4K TV, whatever you want to call it, then at least they're going to have something if the shit ever did really hit the fan. Number two is what he calls prepper snobs. At some points I agree with on this for sure because there's a lot of people who get into this I'm awake, you're a sheeple type mentality where it really is a polarizing thing and anybody who doesn't prep is somehow less than they are or somehow inferior and perhaps this is to compensate for some other shortcomings a person has in their lives, I'm not sure. Uh, he never, I think he does actually address the prepper elitist, and I think that one's going to be coming up, and that's kind of the know-it-all expert types, uh, who I also have some gripes with as well. Then he criticizes the conspiracy theorists, who, you know, you can't just lump anybody who disagrees with the status quo into the category of conspiracy theorists, so he must realize that, you know, things aren't always as they seem or as they're presented by such a consolidated mass media that we have. Regardless, he makes a good point about the conspiracy theorists who base their prepping on these specific theories that they might have about how the world works and like the whole chemtrail thing, like basing all your preparedness strategy on chemtrails when at the end of the day, it's not entirely proven. I know some people are, are strongly convinced that it is, and that's fine. I'm all about open-mindedness. I'm open to hearing that stuff. Now, I think it's important to distinguish between what I call the conspiracy empiricist. That's just the person who isn't as overzealous about their arguments and is willing to keep an open mind to things and isn't just going to cast a big broad stroke across everything when they're talking about anything that you know goes against the uh, status quo so i actually consider myself a conspiracy empiricist as opposed to a conspiracy theorist i think it's a very dirty word that has the effect of stigmatizing anybody who seeks to entertain alternative views 
that run counter to the prevailing hegemony of the society they're in. All right, he makes a really good point here about individuals who might avoid everyday threats and only focus on what he calls the higher order and preparedness scenario. So that's like the big time stuff, like the all out World War III, total grid down, solar flare, EMP, worldwide pandemic, stuff like that. Now, I tend to focus on a lot of that stuff. However, I, I try to balance my prepping with both of those things. But uh, this is not an attempt to validate myself, or maybe it is. Who knows? I guess I am going to be validating my own prepping uh, efforts throughout this talk. And that's a whole reason why I love videos like this that are critical towards prepping, because they force me to self-reflect on my own strategies and how I can perhaps en enhance them. Uh, so yeah, I agree with that. You know, there should definitely be a balance between prepping for the global and prepping for the short-term local scenarios, all the way down to just preparing for getting your car stolen or just getting in a road rage incident or something like that. He takes a quick jab at the obese prepper. Uh, that's a pretty standard criticism. You know, I, I, I try not to really go there too often yeah that's a problem but i don't think that's a problem that's exclusive to preppers i don't think poor health and obesity is something that's proportionately larger in the preparedness community i just think realistically the american population in general and canadians as well perhaps to a lesser degree are physically unfit then again and especially as a counselor and a motivator I also know that calling people out in that way is not really conducive towards their development. Yeah, it helps you get your frustration off your chest, but it doesn't actually do anything to motivate the person in question. Now, number six is what he calls fake preppers. He conflates a few things here, and I'm not trying to pick apart everything he says, but basically he says that, you know, these are preachy people who talk about, once again, the higher order stuff, but they're not prepared for dealing with everyday life scenarios so that could be things like you know the debt that they might have uh, the mortgage on their house you know they don't have a six month uh, financial fund in case they lose their job practical things you know they might not have paid their insurance or something like that you know they don't have a home security system they don't have gas in the tank you know you could, you could get as practical as you want I agree with some parts of what he's saying here about you know that you need to obviously be well in the here and now as it stands before the quote unquote collapse of civilization as we know it. You can escape the credit crutch, but it, it comes at a cost. You know, if you live in an urban environment and you're a young person and you just got out of school, you know, uh, especially if you want to go to school in the first place, really it they've made it nearly impossible to not take on some sort of debt in order to fund the way you live i mean basically we're living in a society that thrives off of borrowing from the future i mean the amount of interest paid on a home is outlandish i agree but you know what everybody has to do it so i don't think that you know holding that over the prepper's head when that's something that's pervasive in the general population uh the most i would say most people who have credit debt are not preppers i would actually venture to say that preppers probably have if you were to do some sort of analysis and this is just purely on my butt but they probably have lower credit uh, debt servicing ratios or whatever you want to call it, whatever fancy terms economical terms they use uh, total debt you know they probably carry less debt than the average person i'm guessing and maybe that's because you know as he suggests in some of his other comments that you know they're they're lower on the social order um that's an assumption uh you know I, I mean maybe the ones who come on youtube are of a lower social class or perhaps not as don't have as much prestige and and wealth and power within society right now so we have the time to come on youtube but you know what there's a lot of very prosperous and well-off preppers that come on youtube i mean i personally would consider myself a middle class person i'm not rich by any stretch of the means i'm just a, a hard-working middle-class person so i think anybody who really is a middle-class pepper then can't be subjected to that microscope all right number seven is the criticism that this is just a hobby and you know what i'm totally okay with prepping being a hobby there's nothing wrong with uh, prepping just being a, a fun hobby like any sort of recreational activity you do it's useful you know and you can waste thousands of hours of your life if not days 
on video games, on sports, on television, on things which bring you absolutely no gain whatsoever except uh, messing with your neurochemistry for several hours out of the day to make you feel satisfied. Whereas at least with prepping, and the very least, you're subjecting yourself to information, to pseudo information in the very least, even if it's just in the form of scrutinizing post-apocalyptic film to try to pick out, you know, the 10% of stuff in there that might be actually applicable to a real life scenario, it can be useful. So that's something that we, we need to keep in mind that it is okay if prepping is a hobby. It's no different than people who spend thousands of dollars on season tickets to the game and buy all the jerseys and all the nonsense personally stuff that I'm not into I don't really understand how a person can get so fanatical about something that really has no meaning whatsoever in the grand scheme of things other than you know that the main arguments about building camaraderie and teamwork and all the yada 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 uh, there's other ways to do that that you don't have to build billion dollar stadiums and anyways I'm not gonna get into that rant but basically, that's my view of prepping as a hobby. It's totally okay. He makes a quick point about gun safety, and for that, I'm totally in agreement with. I think in Canada, simply because our laws are a bit more stringent, there is more emphasis in general on gun safety, just because we all have to go through all the extensive safety courses and in order to get licensed to, to own firearms. So we have a couple acronyms here. Uh, one of them is ACTS and one of them is proven. I'll post the image of those on the screen here so you can see. So yeah, gun safety all the way should absolutely be uh, very important. He also talks about people who don't properly store their guns and how that can be a security risk and whatnot. So I totally agree with that. He does talk about what he calls the what if guys. I'm not sure if it's the what if ninjas that Chris Tanner from Prepared Mind 101 is talking about. It might be, I'm pretty sure it's actually the same thing. Basically. The what if ninjas are the people who say, oh, you don't need that because I can imagine a scenario like this where that's going to be obsolete or you're going to lose it or it's just not going to be, you know, uh, required in the situation or you're going to get it stolen or whatever. So I'm just not going to prep at all and I'm going to die. So this isn't actually a criticism of preppers. It's a criticism of the critics of preppers. It sounds like anyways, if I'm correct. And yeah, I would agree to that to some extent, although I do appreciate the what if ninjas because they do stimulate thought in the same way that the immortal stimulates thought. Uh, because any sort of criticism personally, I'm drawn towards simply because it forces me to really make sure the foundation of my beliefs that I'm standing on is stable. So I appreciate the what if ninjas. Uh, which is not to say I necessarily agree with even 10% of what they say. Uh, a really awesome point that he makes is about not prepping for hardship and trying to replicate the environment that we have now and carry that over into some Teotihuacan end of the world type scenario. Now I did a video about minimalism and prepping uh, probably about two years ago now, almost almost exactly two years ago. And it dealt with this exact issue that there's so many people when you see them going camping with these massive 25 foot trailers or whatever the hell they are. And you know what? I mean, I'm going to be a liar to say I wouldn't want a 25 foot trailer. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Obviously, I wouldn't want the debt load, so I wouldn't go and buy one. But if someone said, hey, you want a 25 foot uh, RV or whatever, I don't even know if they come that long. I'm just guessing how long they are. But uh, you want this 10,000 pound RV that you don't even have a truck big enough to tow I'd be like yeah sure bring it over you know like why not I totally understand though where he's coming from because I've made that exact point before talking about this idea that you're gonna be able to replicate the same conditions that created the problem after the problem has you know evolved into full-blown consequences it's just not realistic to assume that you're gonna maintain the standard of living you have now after some sort of disaster situation. It, it's totally asinine, actually. I agree 100% that we need to prepare for hardship and adversity. And that's why I always encourage people to push yourself, you know, embrace the pain of life, work hard, sweat, you know, work your ass off, work your fingers to the bone, deprive yourself in some way. I'm a total masochist to some extent, 
But at the end of the day, when I sit down on the couch, I guarantee you that that five or 10 minutes that I actually do sit down on the couch is better than the 10 hours that some people sit on the couch for because I totally embrace it more. It's like you can't have the sweet without the sour. Another point he makes, which I'm in total agreement with, is the underrating of hygiene and medical issues. I totally agree with that. Uh, he also talks about how food prepping is not a hot commodity. I've actually done quite a few videos on food prepping lately, but I agree they're not as entertaining as the tactical stuff. And he, and he admits that and he agrees with that. You know, we're all we're all guys, right? Well, 90% of us or 90% of my viewers are guys. As you know, in my last three or four videos, I talk to a lot of female preppers, but that's sort of what we're drawn to. That's what's in our nature, the warrior-like stuff, anything that deals with survival and and gear and the fear gear and all that we're really into that stuff so hygiene medical not major issues does that mean that people don't think about it i don't know uh i certainly do you know i just made a video about uh, toilets and toilet seats uh, so you know it's definitely there it's definitely an issue so hopefully people do start emphasizing those more practical everyday aspects of things as much and make sure you have all of your core base bases covered before you venture into the hundred dollar handmade ferrocium rod overemphasizing guns yeah I, I can see that too uh and he he says himself that he overemphasizes guns and you know i think this topic has come up lots in my videos before about the overemphasis on guns and i've gotten a bit of blowback about you know the importance of security and, and i've heard all the arguments there so you know you don't have to jump in on that one i think that's a topic we've entertained ad nauseum so uh let's not even bother to talk about that one i think i'm in agreement with him about that he talks about people who are he uses the example of emp centered or emp centric i guess with uh if a prep isn't useful in the higher order in the longest term if it's not something that's going to last forever and be bomb proof forever then it's no good at all and he uses the example of like an emp doomsday enthusiast who might say that oh you don't need that gps because it's gonna not function if there's an emp take this compass instead which of course is far superior in terms of a technological sense so i i'm in agreement with that too i mean 99.99999 percent of situations that GPS is going to be superior to the compass so long as you have power to power it. Absolutely. Uh, it, there's more moving parts, so there's more that can possibly go wrong. That's an argument you can make. But in terms of what it does, the function, the knowledge it provides, it's far superior. And I agree with, with that whole EMP centric thing or that even just total collapse centric idea that something is not useful unless it's useful forever is just uh, totally asinine uh, number 16 is a very good point which is worth a video unto itself and actually i've touched on this in a video i, I made entitled the beast within it's towards the end i think it's the last 10 minutes of that video where i talk about preppers tendency to believe that people are bad by nature as opposed to the argument that the immortal is giving which is that you know no people are have an equal potential to be good and so that he's basically saying that preppers essentially are cynical about human nature and i've argued before that preppers by and large are perhaps simply because they're so untrusting of authority and whatnot that they they take a more freudian view of human nature which is basically just that you know society is what keeps man trained and is what makes us all civilized and that in the absence of society we would just turn into absolute monsters right and then there's other theories like the humanistic theory on the other side of the spectrum which says no people are actually you know geared towards being tribal so that by that theory we we, we need to be empathetic we need to have a sense of community the only way we've evolved by that theory is by showing love to our fellow man and by helping and by sharing yes there has been war and conflict and whatnot but within our smaller tribal groups anyways we have to reciprocate kindness and we have to be courteous and we have to share and all those things as opposed to just dog eat dog every man for himself full-blown law of the jungle type thing that the psychoanalytic uh, freudian type view purports so that's an ongoing debate yeah i think preppers are generally more cynical 
I still sort of lean towards that, but I totally understand that there is the potential for people to be as good. And I think he's got us here and that we probably do overemphasize the negative aspects of people. You know, I made that video entitled Dangerous People After the Collapse. Probably one of my most viewed videos in the last four months. I don't know why, maybe it was the, the girl in the thumbnail. But uh, a lot of people came on there and just said, oh, well, why don't you just say don't trust anybody? You know, because you pretty much name off everybody in society. And like that was the whole point was to show that, yeah, everybody under certain circumstances probably can't be trusted or you should at least be suspicious. Not that everybody is necessarily evil or not to be trusted ever, just that on a long enough timeline and if there's a lo enough deprivation, then yeah, people are going to do what they have to do to survive. That wasn't saying that man by nature is an evil creature. Uh, if we were by nature totally evil, then we wouldn't be where we are today. The simple fact that civilization exists now as it is, is proof that we do have that instinct to work together and that overrides our desire to kill each other because apparently there's more than 7 billion of us now coming on 8 billion, I think, so yeah we seem to be able to get along now it took us many thousands of years to get there though and that's probably uh argument that would be made from the other side but that's for another video i'm rambling on about that okay next point is about the reversal of the social order i've talked about this in several videos and i do stand by this argument but not to the extent that he claims now he claims that the poor guy who's, you know, perhaps rejected, has got low self-esteem, low self-confidence, doesn't get the girl in this paradigm, doesn't get the good job, doesn't have the good car, whatever, is a just disgruntled, resentful citizen who is deprived, that they have this fantasy that they're going to become the top dogs in the post-collapse environment. There's a lot of angles to explore here. So in some ways, I do think that people who are raised in some sort of poverty uh, have that advantage that he even hints at earlier in, in this discussion here about you know being ready for hardship so i think in that respect a lot of those people have the advantage of being more conditioned to dealing with hardship and adversity now that said that doesn't mean that the businessman down the street who works his butt off every day and you know wakes up at a set time and is very self-disciplined uh, is not going to find a way to survive in the post-collapse environment. They might not have the actual skill sets like that mechanic down the street or that old poor homesteader who knows how to grow their own food. But generally speaking, the deck is going to be reshuffled. It's not just going to be a total inversion with all the people on top going straight to the bottom. Absolutely not. There's going to be people who are resourceful and intelligent and analytical and able to survive in any climate that they find themselves in. However, due to the fact and I'm going to be making a whole video about this very topic. Actually, I'm not going to spoil it too much. I'm going to stop it right there because I got a big video coming up that goes into great depth about this particular issue. So I don't want to ruin that. Stick around for it. Probably not going to be for a month or so, but We'll definitely be getting to that. Next point here, number 18, is assuming that rural people are better off than urban people. And he talks about how, you know, a lot of people in rural environments are impoverished, you know, living paycheck to paycheck on government subsidies and whatnot, and that they're not the nicest people either. I think we do have that assumption that just because you live in a rural environment, you're somehow friendlier and can be trusted more excellent point and i think that one in itself is worth its own video and topic of discussion i did make a video entitled urban versus rural preppers i can't remember if i made that point in that video i kind of wish i did now because it's a great point that we should talk about a bit more i think generally speaking there are you know there is that down home friendliness in towns where you by and large can leave your door open but yeah there's just as much human nature no matter where you go uh, he makes an interesting point about underestimating cash and how most preppers think that money is automatically going to be worthless and he he says that you know he uses the example of uh, venezuela right now where you know they might still accept us dollars or some other form of currency so that that some currency will prevail 
or some means of commerce will prevail even if the dollar collapses that something new will emerge and that's a really interesting point that's something that's really worth uh, talking more about i think uh, i i don't think that trade and barter with the silver coins and you know carrying your your big bag of coins on your side down to the market i i just can't see that happening this day and age but uh yeah so we should definitely explore that point in more issues so great points there mr immortal makes another point i think this has come up in some of my talks too before about you know people who have skills who may not be preppers that they're just going to die you know and he talks about how if he knows a doctor down the street and he needs help then he's going to share his preps with people who have those skills and i totally agree with that i think i made this point i can't remember in which video because i have like 300 plus videos about this kind of stuff but that is something that I totally agree with that you, just because you don't have preps doesn't mean you're going to be useless. You may be the best surgeon in the world and not be a prepper. Or are you just going to let that guy die so you can, you know, hoard your stuff? Or are you going to see the importance in keeping them fed, alive, and happy so that they can look after your community? It makes perfect sense to me. I mean, he talks about predicting the unpredictable and brainstorming all day long. I suppose, you know, uh, by many people's standards, I would fit into this category. But again, I say that prepping as a hobby, prepping as a sport, brainstorming this kind of stuff, it's a mental exercise. I don't think it's making us any dumber, at least I hope it isn't. But I could think of a lot of other poor ways to use my time that were less fruitful and hopefully I never have to use any of this information but I don't see the problem in it you know it's like I don't go on people's videos there's millions of videos about just the most mind-numbing nonsense that does nothing for anybody but make them dumber it actually will drop your IQ a few points if you sit there and watch this crap all day I don't go on those videos and criticize them for wasting their time amusing themselves to death all day long. So what does it matter if we're brainstorming things all day long? At least we're using our brains, right? He makes a good point about the unorganized hoarders. And, and I agree with this 100% as well. I'm gonna actually be making a video about this very topic pretty soon. And uh, this is just a great point he makes about having so much stuff, but no system to organize it and access it when you need it. So very important. So I hope that has stimulated some more thoughts, stimulated some more discussion. And I want to thank the Immortal again for raising some extra points and getting me thinking about some stuff and allowing me to state some more of my opinions if you hadn't heard enough of them already about uh, all things preparedness and survival so don't forget to like comment subscribe and if you are into the survival gear thing i do have an amazon store it does help support the channel uh, when you buy things through those links uh, you don't it doesn't cost you any more money than it would normally basically uh, you're paying the same amount it's just uh, helping out the channel so if you are going to do some shopping if you did it through those links that would be appreciated thanks for watching canadian prepper out Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.